we got here is a 1970 Roadrunner convertible. Now, we're kind of jumping into this situation a little late. Um, as you can see, the car is basically restored already. And when I say that, you can kind of look underneath the car and see that all the work has been done. Let's look inside the engine compartment. You can see that. Everything's already painted. Everything's brand new. All the rust has been uh, repaired. The bottom of the car is immaculate. And the car is basically in paint-ready condition. Now, when I say paint-ready condition, I'm not talking we can sand this baby down and throw the paint on it. I'm talking about it needs the final block sanding done to it. It needs the final bodywork done to it. Final prime job, and then paint. Now, why did I say paint ready? Let me explain it to you. This car was bought and purchased in a junkyard. What you're looking at here was a junkyard resurrection. And when I say junkyard resurrection, we aren't jacking around here. The floors, all the floor, complete floor and trunk floors were completely replaced inside the vehicle. We got the left and the right quarter panels, full quarter panels replaced. We got a full tail light panel replaced. Both inner fender wells, left and right on the rear, have been replaced. Major rust repair on both left and right inner fender wells on the front have been repaired and patched and refinished. And as you can see, reconditioned and perfectly new. Both front fenders are factory fenders but were in extreme, extreme, what can we say, rotted, unusable condition and had to be completely restored. We're going to move down to the door. Both doors were just total trash, total incomplete trash. Did I mention this is a convertible? Very hard to find convertible parts. When quarter panels are replaced on this, they don't make quarter panels for convertibles. You've got to buy a uh, hard top uh, quarter panel and modify it to make it work. Um, we had very, very, uh, what can we say, extreme conditions on our um, rear Dutchman panel that we had to do extreme bodywork and refabrication to make that all work. So what you're looking at here, you're looking at a junkyard salvage resurrection automobile. Now how much did they pay for the car? I don't know. That's not my business. I don't ask questions like that. I really personally don't care. Um, is it a K code, R code, J code, L code, M code? I don't know what it is. I really don't know. I don't personally give a shit what code car this is. I don't care if it's got a big block, small block, uh, automatic transmission, standard transmission, you know, super duty suspension or standard suspension. I don't care. Because all we're doing is finishing it. All right? We're finishing this car out. We're getting her down the road and getting it out. That's the main concern that I have with this situation. So... As you can see, it's a nice, bright, sunny day today over here in Moab, Utah, Southwest Riding Custom on a Saturday. And what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and get this thing painted and back to Dallas, Texas to Nitpick Norm and son. Now, this car doesn't belong to Nitpick Norm. This belongs to his son. And when we first started on this car, they kind of had the attitude, I really don't care, you know, as long as it's all together and it looks good. You know, that's all I care about. I'm not looking for, for, for perfection. When you come to a situation of a car like this, you want the car to be extremely nice. You don't have an attitude that says, as long as it looks half-ass, I don't give a shit. You know, that'll be great. Um, here's a good example if we look at the top of the fender here, you can see where I went over it with a pencil. That means that the top of this fender is 
in need of extreme body work still. Now when I did the body work to the bolt-on parts, I didn't do them on the car, I did them on stands. And when you do body work like that, you have to go back over it. And the reason I say that is because when you're doing body work on a fender that was extremely in bad condition like this one was, you have to go back over the fender once it's bolted on the car because now the fender is solidly mounted instead of all flopping around. This fender right here feels pretty damn good. It feels pretty damn good except for right in this area here there's a low spot. All right, so you're kind of getting the idea of what's going on here. The doors, all right, we're in serious bad shape. I almost, I actually did tell them maybe we should buy door skins. Maybe we should get door skins to complete these doors and they didn't want to do that because they have this attitude that we're not looking for, for, for perfection, we just want it, you know, in good driving shape. Well, that ain't the way my friend Pete operates, okay? I don't operate, uh, you know, uh, driving condition, we're not looking for perfection, shit. Now, I'm not saying that I'm perfect and everything I do is flawlessly perfect, because it's not. I'm not going to say that. But when something like this leaves my shop, I want to make sure that the son of a is in awesome shape and looks like a show car quality situation, not some, well, okay, we don't really care about perfection. You know, as long as it's a drivable car, we don't care. We're not looking for that. We're looking to do the best job we can uh, and get the customer what he deserves when he's restoring a car like this. And that's not just this car, okay? Look behind us over here. We got a 76 Mercedes. Same situation. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna do something like this, do it to the best that you can, not to what the customer's asking. And when I say that, when I say that, I'm talking about the attitude. Well, we don't care if it's flawlessly perfect. We just want a driver. That's all. You put all the money in the car. You did all the shit to it that you've done, and now you get to the finish point and you're asking for a slop job. Are you shitting me? A slob job on a vehicle like this. I mean, this isn't a Hyundai, okay? This isn't a, a Yugo. But that's the situation we have. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie, the body shop girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. journey out what we're going to do is we're going to get our can of guide coat paint and you can see what happened here I already went ahead and um, taped all the jams up because I've already painted all these jams all these jams are painted and I don't want to get any overspray um, inside where the jams have been painted so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a guide coat on this once I get my guide coat on it then we can start blocking this thing out, doing our first block sand on our primer and finding out where the damage is that needs to be uh, gone over two or three more times possibly. We don't know. Just however much it takes is what we're going to do. Because always remember one little thing. I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to go ahead and do that right there. All right. Never say it's paint ready. Never fucking say that. Now, the guide coat paint that I use, the guide coat paint that I use is uh, your cheap, inexpensive, uh, 87 cent can of Project. It's called Project Source Spray Paint. Very cheap, inexpensive junk. Uh, it's flat, flat paint for one. We don't want to use semi-gloss. Anything that has gloss in it is going to gum your paper up. You want to use cheap, cheap, inexpensive spray paint for your guide coat. 
Very important situation here. When you get to a car like this, you want to use a guide coat on it. Anytime you do any hand block sanding, always use a guide coat. And what I use is the flat black, cheap, inexpensive, 87 cent can of uh, spray paint that you can purchase over at the big box corporation stores. I don't want to mention names. You see what's going on here. Let's get her done and let's do it right. Shake your paint up thoroughly. You want to shake it up. You want to make sure that your cheap, inexpensive, bullshit paint is mixed real nice before you spray anything on it. Or should I say spray anything out of the can. And then once you do that, now it's time to put the guide coat on. Remember what I told you here, I put some tape on the door jams. And the reason I did that is to keep this out of there. And when we go around here, we're going to try to... Uh, we'll keep the spray can away from all that. We don't want to get overspray on that. Now, as far as the hood goes, you're probably looking at that saying, oh, that hood's already painted. No, it's not. He purchased this hood used, all right, and we're going to use this. We still have to block sand this down. It's got some minor imperfections in it. We've got to prime it, and then we're going to paint it. But right now, what we're concerned with is getting this thing into the paint-ready stage. And the main thing we've got to do uh, I want to mention one more time, all the body work's been done to this. This is our first prime job. Now what we're going to do, we're going to put a guide coat on it. That's very, very important. So you want to take your spray can just like this. Now watch what's going on here. Okay. We're not going real heavy with this. We're going light. Okay. We're going nice and light. As you can see, look at here. Okay, we're going to move it. Nice and even, putting a nice even coat on there. We don't have to put it thick. Once again, this is called a guide coat. All right, I'm going back and forth, just like a tiger stripe. All right, we want a pattern on there. So what that pattern will do, once we do this, and all this is uh, guide coated, what we're doing here, we cre we're creating a surface that we can find our road map in. And when I say a road map, I'm talking about when we block this out and we're not going to use DA sanders and, and power sanders, what we're going to use, we're going to use our hands. We're going to hand block sand this, or should I say most of it, uh, like on the top of the fenders here, we're not going to use a, a, a hand block because we already know that needs body work. But we'll hand block this out to find all our imperfections. And then we'll go back and redo our bodywork wherever there's black left. You see what I'm saying? So if we find some black paint after we block it, that means that's a low spot. So it's either going to need blocked out more or it's going to need filler to fix it. chalk and then you use a pounce pad to put it on and a lot of professionals um, I don't know if I'd call myself a professional but a lot of these quote unquote professionals they use that type of situation and what it is it, it's like a uh, chalk line chalk but it's black and you take a pounce pad and then you would pounce that on there and then that would be your guide coat um, I'm telling you now, if you use this cheap, cheap, inexpensive, flat spray paint, it's going to cost you a lot less to do this, and it's going to be the exact same thing. So don't listen to the professionals if they say, don't use spray paint, you're fucking up. That's wrong. Don't do that. The main thing about a guide coat is to make sure that you cover it well. And you don't have to cover it. I mean, you can see, just by what I'm doing, all you need is a pattern. Okay? A pattern to show you where your highs, where your lows are, where your deep scratches are, where your 
imperfections are, because that's what a guide coat is for. All right, a guide coat is to help you find all those imperfections that you miss just by not having the guide coat. Guide coat is one of the most important things that you can do to a paint job, a car, right before it's paint ready. I believe that if you want to paint something right and you want to have a high quality job like we're going to do to this vehicle right here, that everything that you do when it comes to automotive paint body should rely on having a nice high quality guide coat to get you to that stage of having a high quality paint job. Once again, I'd like to mention that having a nice guide coat, a high quality good guide coat that you can follow and, and find that road map is one of the most important things to a nice high quality paint job. Especially when, like I was saying, you're working on a car like this and this was a junkyard survivor and you know you got major body work in the bolt-on panels like your fenders and doors it's very very important to realize that you can't see those deep scratches you can't see the waves you can't see the imperfections but by using this guide coat system that i'm trying to show you it becomes possible to help you get to that point of survival and it's going to tell you my job's going to be high quality i'm going to do uh the guy wants a, a 10 I'm going to give them a, a 20, okay? You know, you've heard that uh, scale 1 through 10, okay? He wants a 10 job, I'm going to give him a 20 job. And this right here is what's going to give you that action to say, I'm going to better myself and I'm going to buck it up and do a better job because my friend Pete showed me this and this is the way it should be done. This is going to be an awesome job. It's just not going to be a slop job. We don't want to do slop jobs. We don't want to do half-ass work. We don't want to do, I don't care as long as it looks nice. I'm not looking for perfection. We're not doing that shit here. But then on the other hand, I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. This car will probably not be perfect, but it's going to be the best we can do because that's all we can do. And using this is going to make it even better. Take it easy. We'll see you later. My friend Pete, your friend Pete, right here at DIY Auto School showing you and telling you you can do this get off your ass and do something with your life and quit being lazy sorry no good bitch Okay, let me show you why it's so important to make sure that you have a good guide coat. The guide coat is going to give you the best paint job that you can do. Let's take a closer look at it and go over it. So if we look at this area in the fender, and I'm going to go ahead and get my pencil out and circle these. You can see right here, there's a low spot. You can also see right in this area, there's a low spot there. If we come down here, there's another ding or a low spot. So we found, just by block sanding this one little area, we found one, two, three, and possibly more damage that we need to fix as we are restoring this car. And if I take my pencil, you can see in this area right here that there was some type of bodywork done to this fender because it's got really, really deep scratches right here and it looks like it's low. I'm going to go ahead and get a fresh 
piece of sandpaper and we're going to block that out and see what happens. Now, one more thing I'd like to say, on this block job, I'm using 180 dry. If it gets necessary, I will switch over to 80 grit if it's in real bad shape. And I'm going to show you a bad shape in just a minute. Let's go ahead and block this out and see if we can get rid of this and what will happen by sanding it more. So by block sanding that, we have eliminated most of the deep scratches here, but as I run my hand down it, it feels like this is a high spot. And you can see that that's a high spot due to the fact that we're hitting metal. That means over here where the bodywork was done is too low. So I will have to redo the bodywork in this area right here. So this is a low spot, and the way that I came to that conclusion is because as I was sanding, I still got deep scratches right here, and I got bare metal right here. When you have bare metal and deep scratches in the same small area, that's telling you that this area right here is still low. And that this area right here is high. Let's go ahead and focus on this area right here. We can see that we have bare metal right here. You can see that. But what you also see is you see filler, or should I say bondo, as I'm sanding it. That means that what we're doing by blocking this out we are leveling this out. That means that this bondoed area right here was high. So as I was sanding it, okay, I leveled this bondo out because you can see bondo on the primer. On this one here, you can't see any bondo or filler. That means that this is still low and this is high. I'll have to add some filler to this area here but then on the other hand I might because here's a high spot here you can see that that's bare metal right here and then there's a little bare metal right here so what I'll do here is I'll take some polyester filler and put a skim coat on this I'll skim coat that and then come back and re-block it and that should fix that area. But before I do that, I'll have to fix this section in here. And then I'll override my polyester filler onto the bondoed area that I had to adjust. So remember, bare metal is high, deep scratches after sanding is low. Bare metal is high, showing filler around the bare metal is getting rid of this high spot and leveling it out. So that's level. I hope I'm making sense here on what a guide coat is consisted of and why we need to use this to accomplish the best paint job that we can apply. So I'll go ahead and it will take several days to do this color by hand. But this is the only way that it's going to be done properly. It has to be hand blocked out to find all the imperfections in our panels. Old classic cars or even new cars if you want them to look right, a guide coat has to be applied and used properly. It's very important to take your guide coat and 
and use it as a map to find and to, to, to search and seizure and destroy and eliminate damage that we didn't see before we actually primed it. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, living out here in Moab, Utah, and getting a good uh, injection of dry weather and dust. You can hear it in my voice. <clears throat> um, hopefully I'll get over this. I got mild cases of laryngitis that pop up, and it really sucks. It really, really does. So uh, keep watching our channel. We're over here in Moab, Utah, DIY Auto School. Um, we're going to be going back in to other videos. Okay, so we're going to be going back and forth from Dallas video library to Moab library until we actually eliminate all the Dallas uh, action. Please subscribe to this channel. It's very important. Support me in any way you can to keep these videos coming. Leave a comment if you have a better suggestion on doing this and prepping this up. Leave a comment below. Let other people know what you would do in situations uh, different than my friend Pete would. And if you're enjoying these videos, thumbs it up and please subscribe. Hit that little bell next to the subscribe, that little bell, and that will uh, notify you when I upload new videos. Watch my other channels, and also I'd like to go ahead and say that Minnie the Body Shop Girl has her own channel, and be watching for that. It's coming very, very soon. I think you all enjoy it, and we're going to test it out and try it, and if it doesn't take off, then we're going to let it go. But if it takes off and everybody enjoys it, then we'll keep on doing it. And I will be posting videos, uh, promotional videos, for many of the Body Shop Girls YouTube channel. So I hope you subscribe to that and, you know, support her as well. I got to go. We'll see you later. Take it easy. My friend Pete, your friend Pete over here at DIY Auto School, showing you and telling you tech tips, secrets, and hints of getting her done right, doing it right, doing it right, because if you're not doing it right, you're not doing it at all. Thanks for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.